in accordance with extension of the governor's order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass Journal Law, Chapter 38, Section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Conservation Commission utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. If you wish to comment during a public input portion of a hearing, please use the raise your hand function to be addressed at the appropriate time. For those joining by phone only, please press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be posted on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. Please note that the discussion of agenda items should be li uh, limited to 15 minutes each to ensure timely progress through the agenda. Uh, we'll start with a roll call, please. Uh, if each commissioner could please announce that you are here with both your first and last name so that we can establish quorum. Uh, we might as well do it alphabetically. Ruby, can you, are you on? I am, but I'm struggling with video and I've logged out and logged in like twice. So um, I'm Ruby Clay and I am present. Thank Peggy you. Curtis, presence. And Joyce Voris, presence. So we have three out of four, therefore we do meet quorum. Um, the first announcement is that there is a continuance. Um, the continuance is for 455 Oak Street, which was the amended order of conditions um, for a parking lot and drainage improvements at the Fuller Craft Museum. That's been continued to May 23rd. Does anyone Thank have you. any questions? I was going to also add that we uh, did get two recent continuance requests today as well. In addition to that? Yes. Yep. <laughs> um, and what were they? They are the Pleasant Street Notice of Intent. So that one was a new filing. So that hearing has not actually been opened yet. Um, but they are requesting to be heard at the May meeting. But they're not on this agenda? They are on the agenda. We just haven't officially opened the hearing yet because it's a new one. Okay. Um, and then we also have 940 Belmont Street uh, requested a continuance as well um, to, I believe it was the next meeting. Okay, 940 Belmont. And Pleasant Street was the one that just said Pleasant Street, I believe, right? Was that yep, the one? Yeah. Yep. There just was no Pleasant address Street. number. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. So those have those are all continued. Yep. May. Okay. May will be a busy meeting. Yeah, <laughs> that will. Thank you. And the first um, item on the agenda then will be the meeting minutes. There's a motion. Um, if could I have a motion, please, to accept the minutes from March fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Peggy or Ruby, you're both muted. Either one. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the 315 meeting. Thank you. I'll second the motion. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Boris, aye. The minutes are accepted. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is a 30 Oak Street extension. This is a discussion. Yeah. Only, correct. Okay, yep. Elise, if you could summarize that, please. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, 30 Oak Street extension, um, basically the planning department received a request uh, for somebody to come out and review some marked trees on the property to see if they would be something that could be removed um, or if they would have to file or kind of what situation that that would require. Uh, so I went out on March 22nd and I observed there was four different trees that were marked uh, two of them were in the riverfront area, and although they were dead, still important habitat, um, and where it was observed that there was no clear um, safety concern or danger in that regard, I, I did not give a recommendation that those ones could be removed. Um, and then the next two are within buffer zone uh, to bank, and they might be within... Um, some bordering land subject to flooding, but regardless, they were trees that could be removed if a uh, RDA uh, was filed. So I did kind of let them know that. However, when I was out there, I did observe um, violations of the Wellness Protection Act. 
So that was inclusive of some debris and pea stone piles that were kind of uh, around the corner of the parking lot and within buffer zone to the bank of Lubbock Brook, potentially within the riverfront area, potentially within the floodplain as well. So I had sent a notice of violation basically um, requesting that they remove those piles that they seed the area and restore the area and that they, uh, the owner or the representative attend the meeting to kind of discuss with us uh, about what had gone down, what had, what had occurred at the site. Um, there was also a board uh, concrete slab under a dumpster that was kind of at the corner of the parking area there. I was not sure if that was a more recent item or not, um, but that was kind of another item that we, uh, wanted to discuss. So I'm not sure if perhaps the property owner representative or any anybody is here. I do believe they received that uh, notice as we did get a return green card on that one for certified mail. Before we check that, could you explain for the public what an RDA is? Sure thing. So it is a Thank request you. for determination of applicability. Um, and so that can be used for a variety of different situations. Usually, it's more often used with buffer zones, but it's basically uh, allows sometimes either tree removal, work like that, um, without having to get an official permit. It's kind of a way of saying, you know what, you are working within resource areas, but you have or are planning to take the appropriate measures not to impact those resource areas. So it, it allows for the work with a less um, intense permitting process without having to go through a whole NOI and all of that. Yes, that yeah, there wouldn't be an, a full order of conditions at the end of it. It would just be a determination. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, is there anyone or whoever the co-host is, is there anyone here to speak for um, anyone from 30 Oak Street Extension, you know? I do, you know the... do not know. I've got a Bruno Silva with their hand up. I don't know if that's the applicant or just a um, concerned citizen. Might be associated with 803 Crescent Street, uh, further down on the agenda. I'm not sure though. Okay, hang on. I will try to chat with him. Oh, hand came okay. down. Okay. Is All there right. Anyone uh, I do not. Is there anyone present for 30 Oak Street extension? If you could raise your hand. Elise, do you have any idea when the green card was returned? I'm not too sure uh, if Isaiah or Road has, uh, remembers maybe when it was received. I know we sent out the notice, I believe it was, would have been late March, um, so at, at least a few weeks ago. Um, with that said, um, it's kind of up to up to the commission if they would like to give the um, owner another chance to come back at the next meeting. If you want to escalate the situation, um, or kind of what what the commission's thoughts are on this. As we received the we receive it um on the 19th. Okay. Oh, the 19th of April. April? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that wasn't that long ago then, huh? But that wasn't since, the date of the last. Yeah, since the meeting was um rescheduled. Yeah. I'm not sure if that might be a reason as to why they're not yeah. here today. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, Ruby, Peggy, um, you have any feeling? I, I mean, maybe we, you go ahead, type. I don't have a reason not to uh, continue um, to the next meeting and give them a chance to you know, answer our question about the concrete slab under the dumpster, whether that's something new and uh, what their reasoning is for re removing the two trees, um, as it states in the letter, that one of them is not doing anything and it's 
adding to the environment. The other two, I could see a possibility because they're leaning towards the dumpster. But since this is the first time we've heard about it, I think it would be okay for us to continue that to the next meeting. Ruby? I agree. Okay, that sounds fine. If, okay, that's fine. So we will extend, should we extend a phone call perhaps? I could, I could either um, send just kind of a, another courtesy letter of just a, you know, requesting that they attend the, ne the, the May meeting, um, or I could see, not sure where I would find a phone number per se, I believe it's like an apartment complex. Um, that said, I could definitely make an effort to reach out again to them. Sometimes I think a personal phone call is actually a little bit more um, effective. Yeah. I'll see what I can um, find on that. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, if I could ask that the commission continue that to a date certain, which is the next uh, mm -hmm. agenda, uh, next meeting date. And I'm, I'm hoping somebody can remind me what that date is because- May 13th. 23rd. Oh, 23rd. Uh, yeah, it was it was um, rescheduled, I believe. As, as yeah. someone can confirm. Okay, perfect. Right. <laughs> Right, so that so that would mean that we would ask that person, that whoever, someone from from that complex to appear on the twenty third, right, right, to address yep. the concerns. You know, it's difficult because they're trying to do the right thing to come forward and say, okay, we need to cut these down. Yes. And then when you go out there, if you find something that's actually a problem, then you don't want to issue an enforcement order for exactly. something they were trying to do everything the right yeah. way anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's so that's what we're we're kind of trying to solve it without yeah. that before. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Of course. Okay. So commissioners, is that okay with you? Just that we will con continue. I make a motion that we continue to the May 23rd meeting and have a letter sent out reiterating the stipulations that Elise has already outlined. Okay. Clay seconds the motion. Okay, I don't know if we need a vote on that. I don't necessarily know, but I we can vote hurt. for it anyway. Yeah. Vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the motion's been made and seconded that that the commission matter for a 30 Oak Street extension um, be uh, continued to May 23rd on that um, on that motion. May I have a vote, please? Clay I. Curtis I. Voris I. Then that has gone forward then thank you it's been accepted okay number three the com another commission matter is uh 35 westwood avenue order of conditions expiration and um yeah so this is breath? i kind of just wanted to add this on the agenda just as a as a quick um reference Basically, we received a letter that the regarding the 35 Westwood Avenue order of conditions, it was um, set to expire October 4th, 2022. Uh, but based on the joint guidance for permitting uh, that occurred basically during the state of emergency, um, the guidelines allow 462 days on an, of an extension uh, from the old expiration date. So, you know, you add 462 days, you get a new expiration date, um, which for them would be January 9th, 2024. The reason I uh, kind of also wanted to make sure that the commission was aware is just that, you know, we might be seeing more of these. I'm not sure if you've, if you've seen this in the past, um, but just kind of want to let you know that we did receive that letter, that they are correct with their expiration date. Um, and there's, unless you have any comment, nothing specific required, just wanted to make you guys aware. Okay. Commissioners, um, any comments? Quick, quick question. Is this a case that Eric Diaz is working on? Is he? Yes. yes. Good point. Yep. Okay, he's got his hand up. I'm going to allow him to talk. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Eric. Uh, Mr. Hi. Diaz, how are you? I'm very good. Um, Thank you for, for, for taking the time to hear this. Um, two things. One, I just wanted to announce that I was here in case anybody had any questions. Um, but more importantly, I think my question is simply the project is currently under construction and my client needs to get a sign off on a building permit. 
So I am assuming that if the commission is in agreement with our interpretation of the joint guidance, um, and we all agree that the permit is still active, then they would be able to receive that sign off, no problem. Is that? <clears throat> I would have to, uh, to be perfectly honest, just look into the specifics of this order. Um, this might be something that is worth kind of just sending a follow up email just to make sure um, that you know we can kind of look at each the the specifics of it just to make sure so I don't quote you kind of an incorrect um, answer on that. Sure. Sorry, I know that might no. not be too helpful, but um, yeah, absolutely follow up with us on that. Nope, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's chaos over here. I'm sorry. Of course, the <laughs> no wait reason. until um, I'm on. Um, I will send the follow-up email tomorrow and we can uh, hash out the details from there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. And is this, is this also something that is that we are continuing? Nope, doesn't require anything. Doesn't require um, anything. Okay. So we Thank will determine what... Hmm? We, are, we are not continuing the decision to accept the, um, the, the extended expiration date. No, right. there's there's no continuances or anything requ yeah. required. Oh, it's only right. required when there's a public hearing. This is just kind of an informal discussion, um, and we will follow up with Mr. Diaz tomorrow, uh, kind of regarding his other question on the permit. Mm -hmm. Okay, as far as permitting. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, the next discussion um, item is the Black Ledge appeal. Um, it's the Pleasant Street, Union Street, Easton, Brockton apartment complex. Um, well, um, Joyce and I attended the onsite that there was for uh, DEP with um, the applicant and the appellant, and we kind of all had our, our big fun discussion. Um, so that was on March 16th, the day after our March meeting. Um, and essentially what it boiled down to, and Joyce, feel free to um, mm. add anything, but we have, we're basically, the applicants are putting in monitoring wells um, as requested by the Eastern Conservation Commission. So they have put that, those in, uh, they're still waiting on some information relating to that. DEP is kind of on hold, uh, as far as I am aware, kind of on their decision making. <clears throat> waiting for more information, um, and then they'll kind of let us know. I do know that the um, applicant did respond to the Hill Law Appeal uh, letter with their own letter, kind of reiterating that they are doing uh, the monitoring wells and you know more information will follow. Um, so that's kind of the gist. We're basically still waiting. <laughs> It does sound like the applicant does not want DEP to, to issue an or, a superseding order of conditions. But it's at hard the same say. time, you can't really determine until the monitoring wells are done what exactly what will happen, I think. I know yeah. that there was supposed, the um, um, Eastern Conservation Commission was supposed to hear it at their meeting last night. And right. it was continued until the uh, May 22nd meeting. The, I mean, May 20, yeah, May 22nd meeting. Um, because they're still waiting to get more data. Yeah. So, yeah. Currently so I bet what data they have so far isn't enough to make a decision. Yeah. So well, they'll uh, let us know. Basically, we'll we'll be provided with data as it comes from DEP or from the applicant. So we're still waiting at this point. Um, that's all I got to offer you uh, as far as Black Ledge appeal. And I do believe, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, Elise, that. If it's found that um, the, the water table is just too high and they have to change, uh, that if they have to change the plans, then those plans will have to come before us once again yes. for an amended yeah. order of conditions, and then we'd have to hear, exactly. yeah, hear that. Yeah, more. yeah, it would be a, it would be another public hearing process. Yes. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Commissioners, any questions at all? You just answered. I, I, that was what I was going to ask. Would we have to, if any changes, would we have to do a whole nother public hearing on that? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Kyle, any questions for anything? Thank you. Okay. And let's see. Do we another need to commission. Make a motion on that? Nope. No, I don't think no. so. There's nothing to do. Just an yeah. update. A good question. question. Yep. Yeah. Another is uh, another commission matter is a 2023 
sewer system rehabilitation project? We might have uh, skipped one. I believe. Uh, oh, yeah, the enforcement order. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. Number five. Sorry. Uh, enforcement order. 803 Crescent, of course. Um, Thank you. So um, basically, this is the enforcement order that we had talked about previously. It was for paving that occurred beyond the existing li limit of pavement that was within bordering land subject to flooding um, and plowing of snow into Beaver Brook within that 25-foot riverfront area. Uh, so this was one that Ms. Shave had um, issued back in January. We had had difficulty kind of contacting the owners. Um, as the commission requested, I did give the owners a call um, on March 23rd, and I spoke to uh, Mr. Silva, and he had indicated that they had purchased the property recently, um, or actually in January, around the time that the enforcement order was issued. So we had basically issued the enforcement order to the previous owner, which is kind of why he had not received um, our efforts to reach out. So the phone call was kind of his first time being made aware of it. Um, and so we had requested that he attend this meeting um, and to, to discuss. Um, and I do also want to note that we amended the enforcement order to have the correct owner. So we will have to re-ratify that uh, enforcement order mm -hmm. at some point. Um, mm -hmm. We could do it now or we could hear um, th what the property owner, if he has anything to add in case we want to add anything to uh, or adjust anything within the enforcement order. Um, so that's up to the commission on um, the order of ratification or property owner input. I think the property owner input would be important first and rather than having to change anything afterwards, so we'd get better. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Silva. Yes, I believe I see. Yep. Hi, Mr. Silva. How you doing? How you guys doing? Fine, thank you. How are oh. you? Thank you, how are you? <clears throat> yeah, good, good. Um, I received the, the notice, but I, I wasn't aware uh, what was going on uh, with the property. Actually, a little bit. They were supposed to stripe the property. That was a request for the uh, So. I wasn't aware of the actual extension towards the, the Beaverbrook until uh, the property. Um, we purchased the property on the city. And my Silver, guy uh, that usually- Mr. Silver, you're breaking up a little bit. Breaking up a little bit. Oh. Um, can you hear me better now? Yes. 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 Uh, so um, the plowing of the snow that used to plow the snow in Dorchester for me, it wasn't much snow. Um, we had to do a strike for the license commission, but unfortunately that day, so I asked my guy from Dorchester, he has no experience. So he came out towards the, the river. Um, maybe it was a, a mistake. Uh, there was no snow after that. I'll, I'll not do that anymore or have anybody just move it to the other side of the building. You know. Mr. Silva, I'm a little, you um, mentioned something I don't know. about, I'm a little. You mentioned something about stripes. Stripes. Uh, yeah, they have on the parking lot. They have to put the lines. Oh yeah. Was that parking area the parking area that was, was that of park? concern, Elise? Yeah. Was so Elise, basically, yeah. Um, so Megan had observed that the Megan had observed that the area had been repaved recently. Um, I'm not sure when exactly. Um, I'm, not I'm not sure, sure when exactly. Hold on, please. Hold on. There Hold is on, a huge. On. There is uh, echo. Does, is everyone hearing this huge echo? Where are the technology people? Help. <laughs> What was that from? Is it, is it still Mr. there? Silver, 
has got his phone and computer uh, or something is is uh, repeating on his end, if he could make sure he mutes himself. And I've got him muted now. So um, at least did you, you were in the middle of stating something? Um, it basically that the biggest concern from this was the parking area. So it was paved closer to the resource areas closer to Beaver Brook than the existing condition. So it had kind of encroached. Um, she did also notice the snow plowing. So I, I understand and appreciate his, um, Mr. Silva's recognition of that. Um, I think the bigger concern was the extension of the parking area that does require an after the fact filing. So my understanding is if you have a lot of pavement, then the interaction between the water and the pavement changes what happens at the wetlands, right? At the resource area. At the wetlands, right? At right. the resource area. Mr. Mr. Silva, do you have yes. both a phone? Um, Mr. Silva, do you have both a phone? And I'm not computer? using my phone at all. I'm and just on your my, computer. You might let me move closer to the to the router. Is it better now? It's great. Yeah. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Much better. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I spoke with the previous owner. Uh, he was telling me move the gas. A lot of those uh, those pavement was damp. He he fixed it. He fixed some portion that was legally on towards the back of it, towards the back of the building. Six foot long, eight to ten feet wide, that goes across along. I'm not sure that I understand. So that I'm not six, sure that I six, a six foot long by eight foot yeah. wide six pavement. Pavement. Yeah. Probably the port actually paved. The other one was previously there. He just fixed it up. He told me, by my understanding, that's what I, I got from him. But it was just a, it was just a, a gravel and the actual pavement. It was just gravel. So they put a little bit of asphalt on the top of it. Which changes that's the drainage, yeah. Just the drainage, yeah. Elise, would it be possible for you to go Elise, out and Elise, would it meet? be possible for you to go out and to meet? Or Elise and Kyle, perhaps, to go out and meet with Mr. Silva to explain more clearly what the requirements are under the Wetlands Protection Act for that particular site? Would that be possible? So that way he would have a clear understanding? Absolutely. And um, perhaps, uh, Mr. Silva, if you have maybe some um, either past photographs or, or something um, to kind of show by, and I mean, I'm not sure if you will, but if you do have maybe some past documentation or photographs or something from the previous owner that just shows um, kind of the, the previous limits versus uh, what's there now. Um, but, you know, we would be more than happy to kind of come out to the site and maybe have more of a a one on one regarding the, the work that was done, what needs to be done, um, et cetera. Uh, perhaps either via email or a call, a phone call or something, we could kind of set something up behind the scenes. Thank you for, yes, I can have, have some documentation. I can ask him for that. I have the, the recent one. I have it here with me, actually. Is, is that Not sure about that, the older one? Is that something that that you could perhaps, um, you know, the, either, the, uh, you could perhaps, um, you know, either. Sorry, <laughs> virtually sorry. send along via email or something. Along via email or something. Uh, yes. You mean now or afterwards? Oh, afterwards. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, that's possible. Okay, so Mr. Silva. I'm gonna dig a little bit and see Mr. what I can Silva. find about what the board. Mm -hmm. But just in case, just in case we, if we cannot find it, uh, of this type of situation. Mr. Silva, if you mute yourself for one minute, just Mr. so Silva, there's no feedback. Feedback. Thank you so much. Uh, um, so much. Yeah. So the question that I have is, was <clears throat> this particular site, since it's near a resource area, must have had an order of conditions at one time? Is that not, correct? Not necessarily. Um, you know, it depends on when the lot uh, was kind of constructed. Depends on depends on a lot of things. Um, if it's older, it might have been before the Wetlands Protection Act. It could have just been something that kind of just had been occurring and, and no one was aware of it. Um, there's a variety of reasons it, it might not have kind of gone through the processes we have now in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I would suggest that perhaps Mr. Silva provide us with you know any additional documentation he has. Um, and if he's amenable to it, have us either kind of go out on site or maybe continue this conversation um, over the phone at another point when um, it might be a more productive conversation. And I think it may be easier for Mr. Silva to visualize what's yeah. important as far as wetlands if you're physically present. And I'm willing, I'm willing to go as well if, if you need, if you want, I'm willing to. It's not necessary, but if you want, I'm more than willing to go. Um, so Mr. Silva, is that something that um, basically we can give you a, call or if you send us an email we can communicate that way as well mr silva is he i don't know if somebody silva? else has him. oh there he is. i was no, muted oh, i was muted but uh yes um um a wetland is something i have an idea right but I, I'm not regulations. So now that I have get more knowledge so I can better protect it, mm -hmm. any suggestions if you guys can visit mm -hmm. or if you guys just do want to do it calls and, and emails, I can do that as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do takes to make things better, you know. Since it is a resource, since it is a resource area, I do believe that area, I do believe that, I do believe that a, a, um, a visit would be appropriate. A visit would be appropriate. And you'll, you can arrange that with, and you'll, you can arrange that with Ms. Tripp and Mr. Holden? Yes, with yes, okay. yes. Okay. definitely. Commissioners, do you have any, um, do you have any um, concerns? I, I found that I have missed probably 40% of what he said. <laughs> so know. I'm lost as to what he understands, what he has um, conveyed to us as his understanding, so definitely a site visit is needed to mm -hmm. clarify what he's thinking and then what we need mm -hmm. from him because uh -huh. this was not productive at all. Sorry. Ruby? Um, yeah, I, I agree the site visit to give him some clarity and also give him a marked opportunity since he's a new owner. He, he inherited this from mayor. So mm -hmm. um, I think it allows yeah. him an opportunity to uh, do what is right in regards to what we've been asking for in the enforcement order um, since he is a new owner. So yeah, I think the site visit would work, the clarification on what the expectations are and giving him an opportunity to correct you know, what we've been kind of trying to get done since this is a third notice all this time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And and one of the major roles I do think of the Conservation Commission is education of the public about the Correct. importance of the wetlands and Correct. also how to work with that to make sure that we can maintain the integrity of the wetlands. 
Okay, so Elise and Kyle, you'll take it from here with Mr. Silva. That's correct. correct. Good, Mr. Silva, are you okay with that? You are muted. Oh yeah, you're muted. Mr. Silva, are you still there? You're muted. You're still there. Oh, you're muted? Yes. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Okay. That's okay with me. That's fine. Great. Okay. Okay. Great. I agree. Okay. We will. I'm sure we will learn more Thank next meeting. You, everyone. Will, I'm sure we will learn more next meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then. Before we move on, um, we just do have to uh, ratify the amended enforcement order um, regarding this. For, for because Mr. of Silva. the different owner. Right. right. Okay. So I do entertain a motion to ratify the amended enforcement order for 803 Crescent to reflect the correct it. owner. I'm sorry. Still hearing exactly. echoes. <laughs> motion has been made and seconded. Um, the vote, please. Clay, I. Curtis, I. Loris, I. So we've ratified the amended enforcement order. Thank you. Now we can get on to the 2023 sewer system rehabilitation project, correct? Correct. Right. Um, so this one is, is also a discussion item. No motions uh, or anything required. Uh, we just basically received notice from the DPW that they are undertaking sewer re, uh, a sewer rehabilitation project uh, in a couple different locations across the city, some of which are within buffer zone to bank as well as to bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, they did send us uh, or send the commission a letter kind of as a courtesy letting you guys know about the work uh, and it is exempt under the Wellness Protection Act. Uh, as a utility project, um, and they have employed erosion controls where possible and employed, you know, trenchless technologies, the newer technologies to kind of make it uh, as less invasive as possible. Um, so just uh, making the commission aware that we did receive that letter uh, doesn't require anything additional unless the commissioners have any questions. Um, Ruby or Peggy, do you I have, have any questions? Question: Where is this occurring again? Is this over in the Bridgewater Brockton area? Uh, this is, is a different one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Elise, do you have do you have the ability to share your screen to show that? Um, I do. Let's see. So this one, it's it's kind of tough actually to share the screen on this one. Um, this one has multiple different locations, so it's over a couple different. Um, pieces. So let me see. So Elmwood, West Elm, White Avenue, East Ashland, Calvary Cemetery, and yes. Main Street. Yes. Um, so there are a series of uh, FEMA flood maps as well as kind of GIS mm -hmm. screenshots showing the different areas. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, I can share my screen. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so I know it's sideways and I don't know that I'm gonna be able to turn it. Ex excuse my inability to use technology. Um, but there are, so there's, it's basically kind of spot, spot areas, a couple longer sections. Um, We have, let's see, a couple areas. This one might be within the bank area. Um, and we that's, also have- That's near flood. Ellis Brett. Mm -hmm. That's near the uh, Ellis Brett pond. Oh yeah, yep. Um, so we, it, it's kind of <laughs> a couple different locations. I think they said eight were within jurisdictional areas. Everything else was just around, um, but so this is another one. Uh, it's all with an existing roadway, though. Um, so, yeah, I apologize. It's not a super helpful uh, sharing on my end. I'm curious as to 
who chose these streets and why they were chosen? I think it's just uh, out of kind of necessity. So it's it's re it's repairing existing damaged infrastructure. So I think they probably did maybe a survey, kind of uh, looked around and saw what areas uh, either had cracks or something kind of similar to prevent uh, any further damage or. Are these worse. also the one hundred year old pipes or the sewer pipes that they were talking about earlier this year? That's a great question. I'm not too sure. It doesn't say anything specific regarding that in the um, letter. It just says it is some sewer spot repairs uh, 12 to 18 inches below the surface. Mr. May, uh, there is there a new sewer commission now? Is that correct? Or is this? There is a new stormwater commission. Stormwater this commission. Is all this okay. is sanitary sewer, so that's okay, different. Okay, so this is straight DPW. Yes. And the regulations, I'm sorry, the regulations do state that um, if, well, they're exempt anyway because of utilities, correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and they are doing uh, employing they, basically the exemptions yeah. is as long as best management practices are employed uh, and they do have those employed. Um, mm -hmm. So that is um, that. Okay. Um, I did have a very quick question though. There was a mention in our last meeting for the that Peggy brought up about the East Bridgewater. Yes. Um, the East Bridgewater one, and there was some mention there about whether or not an RDA should be requested of East yeah. Bridgewater. What happened yep. with that? Yeah, so basically, uh, the commission had asked a uh, comment letter be sent. Um, so unfortunately, the comment letter was not sent out uh, within the time period. With that said, um, basically, the I kind of advised or suggested requesting an RDA. So. The work that is proposed um, is exempt under the Wetlands Protection Act. I find as far as for the commission's best interest that requesting uh, an RDA or something similar of that sort can just be a benefit as far as making sure that certain um, best management practices like erosion controls, et cetera, are employed. Um, that said, they would be exempt. Under the Wellness Protection Act. So even yeah. though it's even though it's a different community that's actually tapping into the resources. And yeah, so the Wellness Protection Act isn't as uh concerned about because that was just the sewer installation. So it's as mm. far as kind of in between the uh, municipalities is less of an issue. So of course, each work within each municipality, you know, would have to be approved for whatever work is in that municipality. Um, the work that's occurring in Bridgewater is, does have to go to conservation. So they will be kind of going through the whole gambit. There's like much more extensive work that's occurring within resource areas. Mm -hmm. um, the quarter mile or so that is occurring within the roadway in Brockton um, is much, much less invasive. So they are still in their early phases. They haven't, um, the, the EENF is kind of a starting point more often than not before going to municipalities, kind of a, a way to get comment and, and such. So um, apologies that that was not sent out in time on the plus side. It is not something that um, is going to necessarily result in unauthorized um, work, if that makes sense. Yeah, I just would love to see, make sure that they are doing it according to, you know, yes. required standards. Yep. yep. And that can be something that, you know, I can kind of keep an eye on um, as they move through other approvals and kind of, you know, get through um, the process. So if you like, I could, I could kind of check in on that um, or still kind of, you know, provide a notice or of sorts if the commission okay. would like. Yeah, that would be appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. But thank you. Yeah. Peggy, Ruby, 
Again, it's, this is all commission matter. Do you have any questions or anything, any comments at all about the dice bridge or whatever? I know it was kind of last month's agenda, but I just, I know in the minutes it, it was mentioned or something nope, else. I'm good. Yeah, no, okay. it makes sense. Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, let's see. Do the next one would be vote or anything on that matter. No, it's just no, uh, I don't think so. It's just informational FYI. and it's okay. yep, mm -hmm. yep. And uh, let's see, the next one is Pleasant Street, which has been continued, correct, to May yep. 22nd. So that one you don't have to worry about. Um, notice of intent the next one is 940 Belmont Street VA Hospital. Uh, that one was also continued. Oh, continue to May. Wow, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh my goodness, I know, right? Yeah, that really <laughs> shortens our agenda, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, good. Okay, um, that's been. Uh, it seems like that's been going on for quite some time. Yes, that one on Belmont uh, Beta did do a third peer review relating to stormwater. So that <laughs> was something that um, they had done. It is uploaded in the commission's drive and. I, I yeah. believe that they are just working on responses to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause there were still some outstanding things there. That Correct. Yeah. Sense. Beta's beta's letter did note some outstanding stormwater concerns uh, for yeah. the most recent revised plans. Okay. Thank you. Then that will bring us to number nine, which is the enforcement order notice of intent for Claremont Avenue map 181042. Um, so that was an enforcement order for that huge, I guess it was a, yeah, huge site. Yes. I believe that Mr. Grady is um, here for that as well. Um, I'm allowing Mr. Grady access. Perfect. Hear me now. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Do you have video also, Mr. Grady? Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't see that. Uh, I can screw. You know, I don't see that the video uh, button is available on the Zoom here. Oh, I, I can screen me, share if you want. If but I don't I, see that either. Let me, there you go. From a okay. panelist. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Okay, Mr. Grady, you should be there. You are. Made it. Hello, Mr. Grady. How are you? Hi. Good. Thank you. How are you? Fine. Uh, I'll screen share real quick. Um, that's okay. Let me see uh, my screen here. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so we've had uh, a few meetings. Um, the initial meeting, we went over the overall strategy of the site plan. Basically, we're going to remove any fill within the 25 foot uh, buffer zone. We're going to restore that um, with plantings under a restoration plan that was prepared by South River Environmental. We're going to uh, regrade the site, um, add a stormwater basin um, to infiltrate any runoff um, prior to reaching the resource area. Uh, we provided erosion controls around the perimeter. I've provided cross sections to show um, that we're removing the fill. See that in this. Uh, section here, the existing line is fill. We're gonna cut that back, um, install a drainage basin, and the, the berm is the backside of the drainage basin. So all this fill is gonna get removed. Um, there's a few different sections that I provided for you. Uh, some details for stormwater. Beta has peer reviewed the stormwater and has signed off on that. At our last meeting, the commission wanted to do a site walk, which we uh, we did two weeks ago or so. 
um, walked the site, we showed uh, Joyce and Elise the processing that takes place here. Basically, this is a recycle um, processing site where uh, asphalt and concrete and wood is basically processed and broken down for reuse, cleaned up. That's what it, it used to be. Right now, it's under a DEP consent order to remove all of the asphalt, brick, concrete. Um, so that is being, that is underway and everything that gets removed is being inspected under the consent order. Uh, and the last final comments from the last hearing, other than to do a site walk, was to add some notes to the plan, which we have added on sheet one here. Those notes were requested by the previous agent and then also asked for a testing protocol, um, which I provided the, and I provided this plan here as an exhibit. Basically, we're gonna do soils testing throughout the 100 foot buffer zone. The testing protocol um, highlights, um, sorry, basically the items that are gonna be tested for for any materials that are gonna be left within the 100 foot buffer zone. That's, that's what we plan on testing. Um, that's a licensed LSP agreement. They're under their um, licensure to follow the state uh, protocols and rules and regulations. Everything will be done um, appropriately in accordance with the regulations, laws, et cetera. Um, the applicant is pulling out of this site. It's gonna regrade it, grass it, bring it back to um, a more natural existence. And then hopefully we get a certificate of compliance and, and, and that'll be that. Mm. Uh, based on that, I, I think that's, covers it and I'll be happy to take any questions. Mr. Vita, could you put that sampling schedule back up again? I, I didn't have time sure. to release. I mean, I I had checked to see by the 19th because I thought this meeting would be on the 19th. I looked in the file and I didn't see anything as of that time that looked like there was a sampling protocol present in the in the um, file. Um, yeah, so I, might, I think I finally got this over yesterday. Of course we had yesterday. A, we yep. have to coordinate with consulting engineers now, slow they can be. Um, and we finally just got it's this, conical. you know, between, yes. So we provided this to you. Basically they're saying in here that they're gonna sample four different test pits within that test pit. They're gonna, in each of those test pits, they're gonna visually inspect um, and they're gonna pull samples and they're gonna test for a bunch of uh, chemical items. I'm not a chemical engineer. Um, so TPH, VOCs, SVOCs, PCBs, um, TCLPs. This is the one time I'm, I'm happy there's acronyms. Um, <laughs> and reactive cyanide and sulfide. Oh, PH, I remember that one. That one I have. <laughs> Um, so, question. will are there permits needed to do any of this work that you're describing? I'm sorry. Who? I can I? This can is I, Peggy. Peggy oh, Curtis. Sure. I'm a commissioner. Yep. I was, I was asking if there are permits that are needed to do the testing and the removal and the um, the yes. movement that you're describing. Yeah, so currently we're under a consent agreement, which is a permit with DEP to remove the material. Um, and then if um, any of these chemicals are um, encountered, then they will follow the protocols under these methods that are highlighted here. Mm -hmm. they, will, they will follow uh, the, the required protocols. So 
the, the permits are basically the one we're under with DEP, the permit we're under with you, and then following the protocols for the licensed site professionals. So they are licensed in the state of Massachusetts to follow um, regulations, requirements, and methods. Mm -hmm. And if I heard you correctly, you said you're only doing testing in the 100 foot buffer zone. So what about the rest of the property? Um, the commission has jurisdiction within the 100 foot buffer zone. So yes. we are permitting with you. So therefore, yep. we're providing you with um, assurance that the any soils that remain here are um, clean. Mm -hmm. We've done test holes in the site. The reason why I'm asking that question is that if you only clean up the 100 foot buffer zone and the rest of the property is not during the rains and leaching and things like that, would it be possible that any remains that are contaminants would leach into the 100 foot buffer zone if the rest of the property is not cleaned up. So this the site was uh, filled with site fill and brought to grade. And then the materials on top are uh, asphalt, brick, concrete. Um, it's being tested continuously under DEP's watch. There's been no um, chemicals, materials, there's nothing that's indicated that there's um, chemicals that are tox toxic. Um, any of these chemicals have not been encountered to date. And we are doing a good cross section for the commission, random cross section within your jurisdiction to further. Um, um, prove that the, the material that's there is uh, site fill, not toxic chemicals. How deep will those test holes be? So you know? we're going to, yeah, we're going to excavate down to, it says 12 feet. Uh, that should give us plenty of depth um, based on these cross sections. Hold on. Six. But those berms are higher than that, right? I mean, yeah, but we're remember we're stripping out a bunch, so we're going to strip it down to here. Okay. And then we're going to dig down to natural occurring material. So we're going to dig through until we hit hit natural material, um, and test that profile. So remember, we're taking all of this out, and we're going we're not going to test anything until we um, get down to this elevation the proposed elevation. And when do you expect this to be done, Mike? So the DEP was supposed to get all the asphalt, brick, and concrete that's piled on the site out within six months. So that's supposed to be June. Um, the rest of the site, I mean, typically there's an order of conditions for three years, but I, I think you know, depending upon the timing um, of planting seasons, et cetera, it's hard to say. Um, so I'd like to think they could have it stripped and down to grade and get that testing by the fall planting season. Hmm. Um, but if they miss it, we don't really want to, we'll have to wait till the following spring um, to try and time that. Otherwise, they're moving. They're moving quickly over there to remove the uh, the stockpiles. I, I personally feel as though we've just just received the um, that requested soil testing protocol, and and personally, I don't feel comfortable with closing but i'm not sure how anyone else feels or 
Um, I'd like to know more about the timeline. Is the property is the property removing these materials by selling them, or are they removing them by dumping them somewhere else? They're removing them from your jurisdiction. And they are they are following DEP's approval or their consent order. DEP has ordered them. Um, and I believe that came about through um, the city's um, urging and various uh, permitting layers. Um, that so kicked in what DEP. Term, what time testing and permitting has been done to date and what's the timeline on that? So the currently the, the DEP has a consent order to have the stockpiles removed within six months. I believe that ends in June. Um, and they ha have an LSP requirement within their consent order. So that licensed site prof professional is inspecting the materials and looking for anything that appears to be a potential hazard source and they and, and that's just part of their procedure and there's been nothing flagged to date so basically they're also doing is crushing concrete brick and asphalt mm -hmm. at this point and removing it so why why is it taking so long to do this why why till june it's a so, massive site. If, yeah. It's if, a massive if, site. If you are on the site, you could see that they're they're really moving pretty fast considering the mm -hmm. volume of materials. And uh, like what kind of protections are being taken when they remove the materials? Um, are there any needed? Are they going onto dump trucks and then bring brought to a DEP approved um, place? Um, uh, correct. Or is that not out Quick of our question, Mr. May? I I believe this may be outside of your jurisdiction. It is. Role yeah. As, as yeah. Wetlands, it's outside so. of the wetlands part. Yeah. 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 Our our I jurisdiction agree. is um, really it relating to this is, is just uh, relating to the enforcement order for um you know the areas within 100 feet of the uh bordering vegetated wetlands um right so uh we did receive that as as mr grady said um he did provide the two agent comments that was requested um from Ms. shaves last uh agent report and they did also uh provide the fill management plan that was requested by Ms. shave uh, and that was provided yesterday um so you know, that's at the, the commission's discretion as far as how comfortable they feel with having had time to review it. I will say that they have provided all of the requested material at this point. Um, however, understandably, you know, the time to review it is, is up to the commission, but I did want to share that with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I am going to ask both this applicant and any future applicants that if they have reports that require the commission's attention that they be delivered no less than 10 days before the uh, commission meeting. Uh, so make sure that the commissioners have an opportunity to uh, read and digest that information. At least a week. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. 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 Understood. Um, I, I got it to you as soon as I obtained it. Yep. Sure. Yep. That, that's fine. I'm just making a blanket statement here. Yep. You're not you're not the only that's, one. That's appreciated. Really? Okay. Ruby, do you have any questions? Yeah, so for me, um, I would like to review the documentation that was provided. So maybe we move this um to the May 
23rd meeting or something continue. so that we have to yeah continue so that we have the appropriate time mm -hmm. that's like rob just said to to go over what we're and, and digest it and, and come up with any questions or concerns we may have with what we have so that we can move along properly i just have one additional question too just because of this whole concept of a soil testing protocol you know with a schedule um and that's fine but what happens if during your fulfillment of that protocol and while you're following that schedule, what happens if you do find things that are hazardous, then does that information come to the commission or are you just held legally held responsible to make sure that you take care of that? And we just assume, just say, for example, we said, okay, we're going to close it. And we're going to, you know, sign off on an order of conditions enforcement order is done. Um, yep. The how, LSP how does that is, work? The LSP is under um, licensed uh, requirements to follow um, EPA, DEP, uh, and chain of custody protocols. They need to, to um, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To basically there report it. They have to report it. Yeah, yeah, report. Thank you. And they would, okay. I'm sorry, I just have never come up with this before as, as something to consider. So I, it's sure. completely an educational right. opportunity for me. Yeah. Um, I, yep. Appreciate it. Um, sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do believe too that we should be able to open this up for public comment if the commissioners feel like they've had their questions answered. Yeah. Okay. I, I do just want to add to, I'm not sure uh, if the commissioners saw that we did get a uh, email from uh, Miss Lisa Crowley that was added into our commission's drive just just to make the uh, commission members aware that that is is in there um when did that go in I didn't it was it. only a couple hours ago it was this afternoon oh, okay yeah okay. correct yeah but for, for any further review that. um you know that's that's in there for your consideration as well okay okay right. um so we will now take comments from the public Use your raise your hand function uh, to be acknowledged. When it's your turn to speak, state your name for the record. Uh, make sure that the comments are limited to the Wetlands Protection Act, and please keep your comments to just five minutes if you wish to speak. I have a Miss Lisa Crowley who would like to speak. Miss Crowley, you should be able to. Yes, hi. Microphone. Am I on? Can you hear me? You're on. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Excellent. Thank you all for your uh, hard work on this. Um, yes, I got my letter in um, a couple of hours ago, and it has to, it's mostly about the eight foot access that is being proposed um, for this project for the, it sounds like the convenience of Mr. Rukas and dealing with this wetlands issue. Um, I'd like to know more about that eight foot access. Um, as well as I, I wrote my letter uh, to um, illustrate and outline all of my concerns um, for any kind of access other than the Howard Street gate. Um, this environmental atrocity was created coming in and out of that Howard Street gate, and we don't need any more trucks going down Claremont. Um, some of the commission members may not be aware but after the cease and desist orders prevented Mr. Rukas from using the Howard Street gate, he went out the emergency exit with massive pieces of equipment on these little, little teeny roads um, out of Sprague and Gay. Little kids almost got run over by these um, dump trucks, cranes, Ms. Crowley. timber. It's, it's Ms. Crowley. Yes, I, Ms. Crowley, I'm sorry, but that's really outside of the jurisdiction of the Wetlands Protection Act. It's perhaps a traffic commission or no, um, it's part of his proposal to create some kind of eight foot access to make this so much more convenient. So what is I believe what is it was required to be able I believe it was required to be able to get access to the the um that uh, the wetlands area that's going to be restored, I believe. 
I, I thought that's what the plans had said. Um, and it was gonna be a grassy area to be able to provide access to the wetlands area that needs to be restored. That was my understanding. Um, Elise or Kyle, if you, you know. That or, was my understanding as well. Yeah, that's that was um, actually something that was requested by Beta um, for uh, in the stormwater review to also allow kind of access for maintenance of these stormwater basins uh, and the like. Uh, but it is a vegetated area, and um, you know I'm not sure if if anyone else uh, on the commission has anything to add. But perhaps uh, Mr. Grady would also like to add um, relating to that question, if that's sure. okay with you, Chair. So at least yes, that beta and their peer review required that eight foot access way for maintenance purposes of the basin and for um, maintenance of the 25 foot no disturb zone uh, it needs to grow in. If, it, if some of the plants don't um, take, we need to be able to get in there in a reasonable manner and replant them. Um, so I think that was the thought process. That was not a uh, request by the applicant. Okay, that's that's good to know. But will Mr. Rukas have access to that vegetated roadway to bring in dump trucks, cranes, timber, anything else? What is that to be used for? Because you can fit a dump truck in an eight-foot way. I don't think if things are coming me, in. Go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Kevin. <laughs> yeah, that, that's within the buffer zone, and it would be in within the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction to shut that down immediately. There's no one. There's no the the eight foot access doesn't go to anywhere. Um, basically, you, it goes to Howard Street entrance and and back. It doesn't go out to Claremont. Um, and again, that's within the conservation's jurisdiction. They could enforcement order that instantly if it was used in the wrong manner. Um, we have other, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Crowley, uh, we're close to your five minutes, but I'll go oh, over oh. just a little if you have some more. No, that's, that's very helpful because um, the way it came across in the plans, it seemed as if it was going to be an access road out to Claremont. So no, I'm happy that it's not. Thank Good. you. <laughs> Good, Lisa. Good. Are there any other um, attendees that would like to speak to this issue? Um, Ms. Lasso would like to speak or had her hand up. Um, so Ms. Lasso, um, you should be able to unmute yourself now. I did. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. How is everyone? Fine. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to hold this meeting um, after all of the delays that we've been going through and experiencing and um, my friends and neighbors living through this nightmare. Um, I'm very concerned about everything that's going on here, but most importantly, allowing that eight foot entrance in Claremont. Um, I get that was requested or suggested by the beta group, but is, are they taking into consideration, first of all, what's happening to all the people that are living in this area? And second of all, have they done a structural integrity test on the street to make sure that the trucks and the equipment can be handled by that street? Um, I know that there was a report on the streets of Brockton where many of the streets in Brockton, and especially those little teeny side streets over in that neighborhood, don't have the structural integrity to hold those kind of equipment trucks. And I personally live on a street where my street's been destroyed by development. And I'm just really concerned that that you guys will allow this to go on, especially with all of the delays and all of the lies that this developer has provided to you all in the past. Ms. Lasso, where do you, have, where do you think that he's actually going to take this Ms. Lasso, we really have to keep everything focused on the Wetlands Protection Act. If it's necessary to be able to have access to that wetland area to maintain it, we don't have much choice. 
And Mr. May, I'm not sure if you know of another um, a department or another person, another group that Ms. Lasso might be able to take her concerns to? Listen, we've taken our concerns to everybody out there. And it seems to be that this developer has connections in the city. And so it keeps getting pushed off and pushed off. So my concerns are that if he made this huge mess without having the Claremont Street access, why can't he clean it up without that access? He's just doing more damage every day and hurting these people over there every day by getting these things continued and not actually doing what he's supposed to do. He's averting any kind of cease and desist orders. He's illegally grinding over there. And he's not just grinding over there to clean up the area. He's selling the materials that he's doing over there. People, Mr. please know this is happening. He is performing um, Mr. illegal Mr. duties Lasso. and he is profiting from it. Okay. Mr. This, Lasso, I, sir, thank you very much. Activity is outside of the commission's jurisdiction. I know the law department and the city solicitor have been working on this case um, for a couple of months now. And uh, that well, would it's, be it's been more than a year now, Rob, that, not to interrupt you. Listen, I appreciate y'all. I, I just wanted to have my I just wanted to have my words heard. And I just okay. wanted y'all to know what exactly has been going on for these years that you all have not been involved in everything, but we have. And these Thank people you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, any other comments or questions? Please use the raise your hand icon. If you're on the phone, please uh, press star nine, and that will allow us to. Uh, uh, open up your microphone from our end. Thank you, Rob, by the way, for that clarification. And at this time, I do not see any uh, additional hands raised. Okay. Which leaves us with our discussion then, commissioners. Um, we have a choice of either closing the hearing or uh, continuing to the, the May 23rd meeting. I would like to make a motion to continue to the May 23rd meeting for this issue. I'll second um, that motion to continue. So, okay, so the motion has been made and seconded to continue to the May 23rd meeting. And I really appreciate the time, Mr. Grady, that you've taken for this, uh, but we really do need to review it just a little bit more, understand it a little bit more, and um, okay, yeah. Perhaps we'll have time to resolve it at the next meeting. Perhaps, yeah. Yep. Everything's okay. submitted, and uh, I'm yeah. available for questions. Okay. Thank you very and much. Also, right. also submitted in your file. Please remember, there's a uh, and a butter letter, um, a butter's email. So thank oh, you. For us, yes, for us to review. Thank you. Yeah, I haven't seen that at all. Thank you. Okay, so we'll that that will be continued. Oh, did we vote? I know it, there was motion made and seconded. It was, yeah, I don't think you voted. I don't I think, think we voted. So the motion was vote. made by Ruby and seconded by Peggy. So a vote, please. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Voris, aye. The motion carries. That will be continued. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a good night, uh -huh. everyone. Take care. Um, you have um, a few additional items that just popped up between our um, last uh, kind of between last week and today that uh, we would like to discuss on the agenda. Um, yeah, so we actually have uh, two uh, enforcement areas to discuss. Uh, and I believe um, Kyle and Rob may also uh, want to add just a little discussion on the Brockton ordinance. Um, so I don't know if, if you want to do that at the end, Rob, um, or do that first or, or what you're... Why don't at we go... The end why don't, be, at the end? end? Yes, please. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. So um, we have an enforcement issue at 19 Otis Street. So I'm not sure if that's something you guys have seen, but I will... Uh, we have photos in the Google Drive and I will just share my screen. Screen? <laughs> screen. <laughs> Uh, screen. Um, so the building department made us aware um, that there was 
construction of kind of a retaining wall area with a pergola occurring at 19 Otis. It was reported, I believe, by a neighbor. Wow. So these are some photos um, of the area that was constructed. Um, we have a staircase that goes down into the brook. Um, so Where is Otis Street? What is that brook? Do you know? That's Salisbury Brook. Is it? Uh, Salisbury Brook. Really? Yeah. So this was something that uh, we just been made aware of on Thursday and Kyle had kind of gone out to the side he had taken these photos and um, we have kind of looked at, we put kind of some materials together for preparing an enforcement order uh, and figure that, you know, at this point, since it was such a recent uh, observation and the building department has issued a cease and desist that we would kind of bring it to the commission and see uh, if you would like to issue an enforcement order that's requiring the restoration of the this uh, of the 25 foot riverfront area, um, basically restoration of this area to existing conditions. I do want to note as well that it does appear as though this portion of the construction may also be on city owned property. So um, it, it yeah. appears that most of it is on city owned property of the recent construction. So um, it would basically be a enforcement order requiring the restoration of this area to existing conditions. That would also be inclusive of a surveyed plan to kind of determine where the property actually is in relation to the completed work, uh, as well as having kind of a wetland scientist or you know equivalent professional employed to determine what resource areas are present and how they were impacted. Um, and ultimately this is not something that we could do an after the fact, say filing or permit on as this work is not something that would meet the performance standards under the Wetlands Protection Act um, for, for any of the resource areas that are present. So this would be some uh, a, a enforcement order requiring restoration. Um, so I wanted to make the commission aware of that and, um, yeah, if you have any questions. And you said it's predominantly so, on city land, but it is not, this is not a city construct, I assume. Yeah, correct. It, it appears, um, that it, from aerial footage, it, it appears as though I, I can tell that Salisbury Brook is on the city owned land. So at least a portion of this construction is as well. Hmm. As long as we're sure we know the right owner. <laughs> yes, that we do. I right. know they've issued a cease and desist uh, <laughs> to that owner. Yeah. Um, so the cease and, cease and desist has been ordered by the building department. Is that correct? correct? And yes. then we would then order a, we would issue we would an enforcement also, order enforcement based on, yeah. on to be able to get everything restored. Yeah. Okay. And I'd like to do that. Mm-hmm. I'd like um, to know if yeah. when the uh, owner purchased the property, uh, how long ago did they purchase the property? And is that part of the um, purchase and sale agreement that they're abutting uh, uh, a wetland? Uh, were they aware? No, PNSs don't include anything in regards to wetland protection at all whatsoever. Unless so the, the realtor is educated about that yeah. process, that's the only way they know, but it is definitely not required on a purchase and sale agreement. But my was... thing is, this looks like common sense. So <laughs> um, for me, I would love to issue the enforcement order to be in conjunction with the cease and desist. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, would I would have to encourage... agree with you. This looks pretty blatant, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I would encourage the uh, the commission to do that also. Mm -hmm. So at least could you, to, uh, could you show the picture of the ducks while we're here? Of the, the what? Oh yeah, the there is the ducks that were these ones. They made ducks. Oh, I thought you said ducks. Oh, <laughs> I thought you no, I thought you ducks. said ducks too. 
I like they the clearly knew that this was not waterfront property for them. So <laughs> yes. at the end of the day, we definitely like this is absurd to we can make I, it waterfront wow. property. <laughs> I guess that I guess that was the thought process. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, these wow. these are um all the photos I have on this one right now. Yeah. 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 I'd like the okay, guy to so, do the construction of my house. It looks nice, but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> not done the right way. <laughs> so I do entertain a motion then to issue an, issue an enforcement order um, for unauthorized construction on the riverbank. Uh, I would second that motion. Otis. No, that, I'm asking for the motion. Oh. Yeah. Uh, make a motion to cease and desist any um, construction on 19 Otis Street and to restore the existing property to um, the way it was before they started construction. Ruby? I second the motion. So the motion really is to be sure that we in, in the issue in the enforcement order? Of the enforcement order, yep. Right, right and to be sure that that construction is stopped and that it gets restored back to its original pre-construction state. 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 So um, that motion is made and seconded. May I have a vote, please? Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Boris, aye. Let's get that enforcement order going. All right, and I got uh, one more for you. We're full of them today. Um, when did that so one come up? <laughs> this one was, um, I believe, uh, Kyle, was that yesterday? Uh, yeah, I think I got the call yesterday on this one. Yeah. From Ames yeah. Street. Been, it's been rapid fire. Um, so this one was uh, reported as 84 Ames Street, um, which I, I believe is the 82 Ames Street property, which is uh, a property that does currently have an unresolved enforcement order on it. Um, so Kyle did go out and do a site visit, uh, and there's definitely been some earth moving activity occurring. Um, oh, wrong one, uh, site photos. So this is, um, basically it's at the corner of Ames and whatever that street is, I apologize, I don't remember at the moment. Um, but Park? they have, yep, yeah, what? Spark? Yeah. Is it Spark? Okay. Yes, yep. Um, so basically this was at the corner, they, this is all within uh, bordering lands subject to flooding, I believe. They had put in a parking lot over in this corner and have had ongoing earthwork going. Um, Let's open up our enforcement order. So this was an enforcement order. It was issued May, 2021. Um, and let's see. Yeah, so it was it was work within bordering land subject to flooding. So it, it appears as though earth moving activities are still ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, and they had essentially kind of just filed a notice of intent and stopped, from my understanding, stopped um, kind of corresponding with the commission. So this is something that um, as far as the commission would like to do, we could kind of send a notice of violation. Uh, we could issue a second enforcement order requiring them to come to uh, the next meeting. It's, it's kind of up to the commission on, on what they feel comfortable uh, or what they would like us to look into. Yes, Mr. May. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. May. I would recommend that another um, cease and desist order be issued and that um, uh, whatever else we said, but <laughs> also that you ask the city solicitor to come before the planning commission and uh explain the conservation the conserva yes i'm sorry mm -hmm. that's before okay. the conservation commission and uh explain the city's efforts to um enforce those cease and desist orders 
because that would certainly help us with our ordinance, I'm sure. No, I agree. I agree. It's, it seems ridiculous that these enforcement orders are just ignored pretty much, you know, once it, it seems that an NOI start, you know, gets, um, gets going and yeah. then, you know, there's, and then you have how, how long before you actually have to uh, get a complete certificate of compliance or anything. Um, it kind of looks so everything to me just like drags they, on. they thought we would um, forget about it because that was in uh, 2021. This is now yeah. 2023. So I think they thought that if they left enough time that we might forget about it. But I know when Megan was here, we went through a series of um, what happens if you don't go by the rules. And first of all, there's a letter that goes out, then there's a second letter, and then I think there's a fine applied. So yes, we do need to get a little tough with this, this group, I think. Well, and unfortunately, the authority does not have the uh, power to uh, levy fines um, on their enforcement actions at this point which is the whole purpose of having a wetlands ordinance um, and, and putting some pressure on these folks. But, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll- That'll be the last item of our agenda, right? I'll get <laughs> That's off my soapbox, up. yes. <laughs> That's coming up, Rob. Yeah. Okay, so um, Kyle or Elise, in your, in your experience, would it be most beneficial to, issue another enforcement order is that to enforce the first enforcement yeah. order i i think and, um at this point uh, i know it probably feels like a, a bit redundant but all we can do is is kind of keep trying keep a record of everything we're doing um and then you know if if we need to down the road but we'll see where it takes us but i do think it's worth issuing a second uh enforcement order for non-compliance um, and, and seeing at the very least if maybe we can get the you know owner applicant or whoever to kind of yes. come come talk to us and see where you know what happened and uh, ideally hopefully what we can do to get this resolved finally. So the next enforcement order would require then that the owner come before the commission at the next meeting in order Correct. to address the concerns that have been evidenced right by your business yes. and okay. um you know discuss the work that they're doing that is unauthorized mm -hmm. which is clearing uh and vegetative removal and such within the bordering land subject to flooding okay so we will need um a motion then for that right for uh, so an enforcement order for that it's we send another enforcement letter that we request the owner to appear before the Conservation Commission and that the city solicitor be also um, requested to come and address this issue. Do you think that the city, having the city solicitor present at a CONCOM meeting is the way to go? To I do because the the enforcement orders i mean we're issuing them we're doing what our process is supposed to be somebody's got to explain who how do we hold people accountable with the cease and desist since they manage that so i mean i think having some insight into what that process is and then them understanding what our process is we need accountabilities so i guess mm -hmm. that might be the only way we can get the information or at least get some concise feedback on exactly what the expectations are from us and for the city solicitor so that we understand how we kind of meet in the middle with, with with these infractions mr may do you like do you normally uh, send once we have enforcement orders and they haven't they've gone through several rounds of okay they're really not doing anything then does that entire case just get sent over to legal oh yes that the entire and it just sits there or I had read something about I'll, not, they're not I'll being just, enough. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I'll just say that they, they are sent to legal. 
they're sent to legal. But then we don't ever hear anything about what's happening with them. Is there, okay, why don't we just invite them? That's fine. That's a good thing. I mean, perhaps we could even do it as towards the end of the agenda between us and legal. So that way it's, or not. Figure out um, the maybe order of the agenda, kind of some sometime on the in between. Um, yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah. We can we can discuss that too. You know, offline. And it could be a commission matter, not certainly not tied necessarily to just one enforcement order, but just make it a commission matter at perhaps at the end. So that way, people that are hearing other, you know, that are here specifically for other things, don't have to. Stay. They don't have to wait, but they can yeah. stay if they want to hear it. Right. Yeah. Does that sound reasonable, uh, Mr. Yeah, May? Sounds good. Okay. okay, so do I do we have a motion to issue? I yeah, had a motion. Chief. And I'm we seconding the second. motion. I'm seconding the motion for the enforcement order for the non-compliance of 8284 Ames Street. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded to um send out another enforcement order for 8284 Ames Street. Um, that motion has been made and seconded. Let's take a vote, please. I just Play want to I. add that there is a request to appear before the Conservation Commission included in that letter. Yes, Correct. but I think that should be separate from that enforcement order because it's not just that enforcement order that the legal department um, signs. signs. I mean, do you know what well, I mean? Wouldn't we request an owner to come whether or not the enforcement letter was sent. Isn't that also required? Yeah. So it, it can be a separate request or it can be a part of the order. Um, I'm sorry, Peggy. My motion you... was that it was part of the order. Yeah. Um, the yeah. owner? That the owner is, is. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. The I'm sorry. Comes before the Conservation Commission. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I, I was thinking legal department again. <laughs> I'm getting them confused. I'm sorry. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded um, that the owner be notified to come before the Conservation Commission at the next meeting and for a second enforcement order hearing. Okay, so a vote on that. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Horace, aye. The motion has been made and carried. Which brings us to the last commission matter, I assume. Um, which Kyle, do you want to talk about the ordinance committee? Yeah, sure. I can get, get us started anyway. So, um, <clears throat> I guess it was last Friday, uh, Joyce, uh, Megan Shave and I had a zoom meeting where we kind of discussed, um, our kind of plan going forward with the planned, uh, uh, ordinance, uh, meeting that was supposed to be taking place tomorrow, where they're going to discuss the new wetlands protection ordinance that Megan put together. Um, so after our, the three of us met, uh, we decided that, um, that I should reach out to the legal department and also the rest of the conservation commission to see who can be in attendance during that meeting tomorrow. Um, and I got a phone call back from uh, Megan Bridges, who is the department head of the legal department uh, with Brockton. And um, again, I'm still fairly new to, to all this. And I feel like I was kind of playing the intermediary on the telephone game. But like my understanding of the whole situation was that uh, Megan Bridges does not um, approve or like the enforcement action that we have that's been written into the new um, uh, ordinance for the wetlands protection. Um, she claims that that type of enforcement action is not something that the city is interested in like dealing with. And she thinks that we need to go back to the drawing board on that. Um, again, this happened yesterday, uh, two days before this was supposed to be up for uh, discussion and review. So that's kind of um, where we ended that. Um, after that, I mean, because Rob can't be at this meeting tomorrow, Joyce couldn't be there, and a, a couple of the other, uh, the members of the Conservation Commission also couldn't be there. It would end up basically being uh, Megan Shave versus Megan Bridges discussing this, and, and you know, not without having any uh, backup on our side, we just decided that we were going to pull it from the uh, from the agenda from the meeting tomorrow uh, and postpone that um, to uh, to a future date, maybe next month or potentially farther uh, into the future. So that's kind of where things have landed now. Um, 
I guess we'll, we'll let that open for any discussion that anyone else has anything to say. I don't know. So Kyle, is that the ones where we discussed the fining, the uh, doing the fines, <laughs> like the cost that we said? Should, so the city is saying they're not interested in that? Yes. And so I have not really spoken to Megan Shave uh, much since then, but I think Joy, she sent us an email very late yeah. today where it was late, uh, Megan yeah. uh, suggested that, uh, that the city of Brockton actually uses that same enforcement action. Um, it's part of their, uh, their uh, uh, like sound ordinance. Um, and they use that to enforce the city's sound ordinance. So why that uh, that mechanism is not appropriate for the wetlands ordinance, but it's okay for the sound ordinance is a question for the legal department, I think. Correct. That would make sense because I wouldn't understand why that wouldn't be, again, how are we holding people accountable if we're trying to protect the wetlands? Sure. And, and when I was speaking to Megan Bridges from the law, um, I kind of asked her that question. And again, I'm very new to this. I'm not exactly sure the, you know, how things have been happening in the past, but it's kind of my understanding that as we've talked about tonight, when we have these, uh, these enforcement orders that are ignored uh, over a long period of time, um, uh, they do just get kind of lost in, uh, you know, in legal. Um, and uh, Megan Bridges assured me that since COVID has hit in, you know, uh, 2020, uh, they've staffed up their uh, legal department from three employees to now up to seven. Um, so she made it uh, uh, seem that they have the capacity apparently now to um, to operate within the existing, uh, uh, you know, not really city ordinance, but with the, with the existing framework set put out by the Wetlands Protection Act, supposedly. So um, again, that's something that we can ask uh, when she comes before the board mm -hmm. next. But there is May. no one. There's no enforcement within the Wetlands Protection Act, the State Wetlands Protection Act at all, right? There's Not no... at the municipal level, really. Yeah. Um, for for any like the municipalities can't levy fines without uh, having the ordinance. So you know right. that's right. It would be something that would have to be escalated to DEP. So yeah, you're correct on that. But I thought uh, Megan said that uh, she fashioned our um, stipulations based on other cities. And towns and what they have Correct. done to Correct. enforce thought, their orders. So this isn't mm. something that's impossible. And you and know, Peg is a city. And um, you know, Peggy, I I do think that that was also reviewed by the legal department before it went to the ordinance committee, was it not, Rob? What didn't the legal department have to go take a look at that before it went to ordinance? Um. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'm walking so I guess, so mm -hmm. I guess I'm, my concern is what's the difference from it going to legal when Megan presented it to her having it now? I guess what, what's changed? And um, I don't know, I'm confused. You know, I don't care if confused it goes to legal. Confused and disappointed. But I mean, I guess I if, if it if they reviewed it and said it was OK, what's the difference now? Yeah, and I, I'm not sure, you know, so that's, that's another question that we could ask uh, Megan Bridges if she comes uh, and attends the next meeting. I just don't want it to because go on and on and on. as it's, it's... a commission, without enforcement, then we have no teeth. Do you know what I'm saying? For any of these, whatever the mass DEP issues, etc. So if you're an owner or a property owner and you're bordering wetlands and you know that your city is not going to enforce then um, you build steps right down to the river and exactly. you put little yeah and you put a little deck right there and you can exactly. put your little lawn chair there exactly that's my point and they will know this and then our whole conservation commission is moved uh, at this that's point you know, so yes, we need some teeth. Okay. So the only thing is, I hope it doesn't go on for because we we talked about this ordinance, this whole ordinance thing. I would say a year oh, ago, yeah. and then it seemed to it seemed to just kind of disappear for a while, and then it it did come back. Unfortunately, 
Megan was gone and she had been like the primary scribe of the entire thing, I think. And that, that makes it more difficult, I think, a little bit. But then again, maybe not because we can take it up anew. I just don't want to put it off too long. I wouldn't want to see it postponed six or eight more months and, and then have all these other enforcement orders that are coming up and not uh, mm -hmm. not being followed through. Yeah. We'll see what happens next month. And the other thing is the ordinance committee lets you know like a, maybe a week and a half before that they're having a meeting. It's like, I would love to go, but I, I do need lead time to make sure that I'm able to get there, especially since they're in-person meetings. For those of us that are volunteers for such things. <laughs> Our pay grade doesn't allow us to be readily <laughs> Okay. Uh, anyone is else? That the end of the agenda, Lou? That's what I was just checking. Does anyone have anything else that they'd like to discuss or bring up? Or welcome, Kyle. Woo! Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Good. Literally well, thank you, Isaiah. Street wet on Otis Street. <laughs> Love it. Isaiah and Road, thank you. BCA, thank you. Move. Everyone is have a wonderful move to night. Adjourn? I yeah. believe there is uh yeah, a motion. I make motion a motion to adjourn. to adjourn. I second the motion. Thank I you. third the motion. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. No discussion Good night. needed. Good night. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> bye bye.